Hey everybody, Doug Rucker here from DougRuckerSchool.com and DougRuckerStore.com and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about hose reels. had a couple of requests about how to plumb them. So I'm going to go through uh, hose reels and how you plumb them for your pressure washing machine, your uh, garden hose fill, and also your soft wash if you've got something like the Kingslinger. Um, for soft washing. So stay tuned for that coming up next. Okay guys, for the purpose of this uh, video, I'm gonna be using these King Sprayers uh, hose reels. This is actually a three stack unit that we're getting ready for a build that we're working on. And so this will have the garden hose, this will have the soft wash hose, and up top will be the pressure washing hose. So down here at the bottom, and I'll come around here so that you can see a little bit more, I've actually labeled them. So at the bottom, always put the garden hose uh, the middle hose is always the soft wash hose and then the top reel will always be your pressure washing hose that's at least how I set them up so top reel is your uh, pressure hose for your pressure washer then you've got the soft wash hose which is generally a half inch ag hose or three quarter some guys use on 12 volt um, so the soft wash hose is like if, if you got a dedicated pump system like the King Slinger, um, or you may have a 12 volt or a booster or whatever. Um, and then the bottom, I always put the uh, garden hose, which will fill your water tank. And the reason you always want the garden hose on the bottom is when you reel this out, you want this to be the first one that you reel out. That way your soft wash hose and your pressure hose always lay on top of the garden hose on a job site and it's not going to get tangled up and pull um, the garden hose. So it lays on top of it and slides on top of it as you're moving around a property when you're near the garden hose or whatever. So that's the initial layout if you're using a stack unit like this, um, a three stack unit to save uh, space. That's how we set them up. That's how I set them up for builds, also for my rigs. Okay guys, um, so for the purpose of this uh, video and anytime you're installing <coughs> hoses or whatever you need to on your hose reels, I'm using a nut driver 5 sixteenths that's for my uh, hose clamps I get all my hose clamps from Lowe's I just get the same ones that way I'm always using the same nut driver sometimes the little uh, threads or notches up here can be different cut metric or uh, regular or whatever so I just always get my the same exact hose clamps um, and the different sizes from the same exact place all the time. Uh, so we're using a nut driver, we're using an adjustable wrench, we've got us a pair of uh, pipe cutters, um, good pair, nice and sharp, blades good. Um, then we've got a heat gun for uh, the poly tubing hose that we'll be using um, to heat up and help them slide over either. You can also use a little torch or you could use a blow dryer. A blow dryer will work as well. You don't have to have something like this. We just use this because it's cordless and we can go around the shop and not have to worry about a cord. And then we've got some lock seal and of course our Teflon tape. So that's the tools that we're going to be using. Okay, so on every hose reel, any hose reel you get, you're going to have of course two sides. One side is where your reel handle goes and they'll always come not installed and so what you want to do is install those and so they'll come like this you want to teflon tape this put your little bit of lock seal on it and then just tighten this down and you want to put this on the side that's going to be most comfortable for you to not do it one-handed <laughs> um, 
but once you've got your lock seal on and your threaded tape just spin it around and tighten it down nice and snug keep the brake on um, that way the reel won't spin and you can get it snug down nice and easy so one side is always the uh, reel handles and you want nothing else over here because you want to be able to turn those reels freely and have nothing in the way okay and then on this side what we have is the side for the swivel again the hose swivel will come it's not installed uh, the stack kit of course is not installed but the hose swivel is not installed and so again on the opposite side of where your reel handle is you're going to want to install your hose swivel um, and so again just teflon tape put a little lock seal on it and then snug that up real good and you can just use an adjustable wrench it's got little notches in it so you can turn it easy snug it up nice and tight but don't over tighten it but let the lock seal and the teflon do its job and then the other part that you have is the uh, locking pin and that allows you to lock the uh, hose reel so it doesn't move and it's got little holes all throughout so you can pick and choose which one you're going to use out in the field um, so I always have the swivel and the locking pin on the same side that way neither one of these are interfering with the reel that I previously showed you on the other side on the inside of the reel what you have is your fitting that you're going to hook up either your garden hose or if you're hooking up your pressure hose or your soft wash hose or whatever you're going to have your fitting um, that's going to allow you to connect this in this case this is the garden hose and so what i'm using here on any type of reel that you get they're usually normally always a half inch fitting here so what I'm using, since I'm using 5 8 garden hose, Flexilla, um, I'm using a half inch threaded by 5 8 inch hose bar. So this is the threaded part, half inch thread by 5 8 hose bar. And then for the swivel, which is the water coming in, solution coming out but this is your water coming in on this side um, I'm using actually three quarter inch hose to go from here to my tank because your water is coming in this way through your garden hose from the customers water supply then it's coming through here and it's going out of this to your tank and I've got another video um, that shows you how to plumb the tanks and matter of fact there's a couple if y'all just search and maybe if I have time I'll put it in the uh, card above if I can find the right one but this is half inch threaded by three quarter inch hose barb and again all these fittings are available on our store website um, when you buy a reel and so that will go from here to the to the water tank and it's plumbed up top using normally a float valve um, to help not to help but to shut the water on and off as the tank is full so that's your basic plumbing um, parts that you're going to need for your garden hose hey guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button give me a like leave me a comment or a question that's what i really like the best um, to be able to help you guys out if you have any questions about this video or any of my other ones please just leave a question um, or a comment uh, hit that again hit that subscribe button hit the little bell that little bell if you hit that that'll give you notifications every time i come out with a video that could be useful to you thank you guys so much for watching and uh, on to the rest of the video So for my garden hose, what I've always used for the last few years is uh, the Flexilla green hose. You can get these off of Amazon. Um, we also sell them here, uh, but you can get them off of Amazon. You can get them, you know, lots of different places. Uh, but 
what I always do is I'll take this end. This is the end that you would hook a hose nozzle up to or garden sprayer or whatever. Um, and this is the end that hooks up to the customer's water supply. So you want to make sure that you don't cut this end off. What I do is I cut this end off using my PVC cutters. Actually, I want to go a little bit longer so I have this piece to use for demonstrations down the road. So I'm going to cut a little bit. So I'm just simply going to cut that and then I'm going to take my hose clamp. Always make sure you put that on. And then this is just going to slide right over the uh, get my fingers back here right over that hose barb and then you're going to take your hose clamp you're going to hose clamp that tighten that down onto the hose and then I always take the uh, bend restrictor and slide it up that way it just kind of helps as you're rolling it up to keep this from kinking one thing about the Flexilla hose I have found is you want to make sure that you're just reeling all of your hose off um, otherwise it will kink um, right here as you're rolling it up. It does a nice job of flattening so you can get another, a lot of hose like on this is a 12 inch reel. We can get 150, 200 feet on this reel easily because it, when it doesn't have water it flattens really well. You do have to make sure once you're hooking this hose up to the water supply that it's nice and straight. Um, turn your water on and it'll fill and it won't kink as long as it's got water in it. But if you're first setting it up and rolling it out and you've got kinks, well, you put water in it, those kinks are going to stay there and you're going to have to go down the line and undo the kinks. But um, I've pretty much found any hose advertised as a no kink hose is a kink hose. So um, just kind of remember that. Now on this side, going towards the tank, what we use is this crush proof hose. This is three quarter inch. And so again, we would have a hose clamp. I'll move that because we're done talking about the garden hose install. So this is just a little short piece for demonstration purposes only, but this is what we use on not only the King Slinger now, um, but we use it on our builds when we're running either three quarter inch or half inch hose anytime for uh, installs, uh, for water, uh, bleach, whatever. Um, it's just crush proof and works much better. And also, and especially important for pressure washers, um, you always want to use crush proof hose. So I'm just heating this up to soften a little bit. And again, this is three quarter inch crush proof hose. And once I get a little soft, I don't want to burn it, I don't want to heat it up too much. The nice thing about using a heat gun for your hose like this is once you get it on and then it starts to cool down, it actually uh, hugs that hose barb a little bit better and seals in a little bit tighter because it was warm and as it gets cooler, um, it, it'll seal a little bit better. So just heat it up a little bit with the hose. Again, make sure you put your hose clamp on before you slide this over and it'll just slide over nice and easy you heat it up a little bit more and then use your hose clamp nut driver tighten that down and that'll make a nice seal and then this would be going again to your water tank because you're again your water's coming in through here out here into your water tank and then at the bottom of the water tank you would have your hose that feeds your pressure washer um, or uh, if you're using like the Kingslinger, we plumb it from the top to feed the Kingslinger for the water. But anyway, that's the garden hose setup. Again, it's usually always the bottom hose reel. Um, very simple, easy setup. Uh, you just have to have the right parts and the right tools. So again, always make sure your swivel and your locking pin are on one side your hose reel that you're going to use to reel the hose up is on the opposite side and doesn't have any uh, thing over there to impede you turning that hose. 
These are stainless steel manifolds. So inside here is what's called the manifold. That's what, it's a little piece of round pipe and that's what delivers the uh, liquid or the solution from here to the swivel, from the swivel to here, whichever, how, whatever type hose you're using. So that's the garden hose. Now let's talk about the soft wash hose. Okay guys, on your soft wash hose, uh, it's pretty basically the same thing. Um, you've got the reel handle on one side, you've got a swivel on the other side, you've got your locking pin. Your only difference is we're using half inch hose uh, always for our Kingslinger soft wash system. If you're using 12 volt, depending on your uh, gallon per minute of the of the 12 volt for five and seven um, I've used half inch hose in the past but it's always recommended and best if you use three quarter inch hose it's a little bit heavier but that's going to deliver you the the most distance it's also going to help the pump last a, uh, much longer because it's a larger hose and, and not as much restriction going through a half inch hose but anyway for the plumbing part you just need two of the exact same fittings and these are half inch thread by half inch barb. Now if you're using three quarter hose then you'd want a half inch thread by three quarter barb. Um, whichever that you're going to use. We're using half inch on our Kingslinger um, because we can do that and just like the half inch hose better because it's lighter but again 12 volts, some boosters, things like that, you're better off using a three quarter inch hose. But it just simply, again, Teflon tape it, put your little dope on it, lock seal on it. Uh, one for the swivel, one for uh, the inside part of the reel. And then again, uh, just slide your hose over, make sure you put your hose clamp on first, slide your hose over, tighten it down, reel it up. And then this would be on the swivel side. This is the side. If I can get a better angle, can't really see it. So on this side, um, this is the side that would go to the outlet of your pump. So your solution will be coming from the outlet side of your 12 volt or your Kingslinger or your uh, booster pump or your gas operated, whatever you're using um, would come to here solution goes through there comes out here to your hose down to your gun and then you can spray so that's your uh, soft wash hose setup again just to, to so you know your I'm trying to think how I can explain this easily this is coming from the outlet side of your pump and so your inlet side is coming, that's drawing the solution into the pump from your tanks, um, water tank, bleach tank, whatever you're using. If you're using a soap tank, um, I don't use a soap tank. I just put my soap into my uh, bleach tank, but um, the inlet side of the pump and any pump usually has arrows marked, you know, in and out or whatever. So uh, in from the pump, and then from the pump outlet to the hose reel from here out to your gun. So that's your soft wash hose. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the pressure reel, which in this configuration, this location, is the top reel. And so remember we talked about um, on the garden hose reel and on your soft wash hose reel, these fittings on the swivel, your thread size here, and also inside the reel or half inch. And so we're using 3 8 inch hose with 3 8, 3 8 inch type fittings, coupler, plug, things of that nature. And so when you're doing the pressure hose, you've got the swivel, which basically gets attached what's called a whip hose. So it goes from, this, from here to the pressure washer so that it's delivering the water from the pressure washer through here, sending it down the manifold and it comes out here. You have your 200 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet, whatever it is that you use rolled up onto here. 
And so the way you set this up is because these are half inch holes, basically, you're gonna need a half inch uh, male pipe thread fitting to three eighths female pipe thread. And so this is basically a reducing bushing. And so you would put one here After you Teflon tape it and put your little stuff on it, everybody knows how to do that, so I'm not going to go through that. Um, and again, I've got other videos on my channel that you can search and find of how to install your, your bulkhead fittings and water supply fittings to pressure washers and the king slinger, all that kind of stuff. And so you're going to put these fittings in, into here after you've used your pipe thread and you've used your lock seal on it. Tighten those down good with an adjustable wrench. And then the way I do mine, because I've talked to you guys before about your lead fitting, my lead fitting is always the plug because that's where the water's coming out. So I was always taught the plug points the way of the water flow. And so the way I would set mine up is over here, I actually use a quick connect fitting on that one. And then on the inside here, I use a plug fitting. And this is a male pipe thread, 3 8 plug. And it would go in like that again after you've taped it and after you've done your lock seal and then use a wrench to tighten it down. And so this is your whip hose. And this would go from here out to your pressure washer and that would plug into my plug that's coming off of the pressure washer. Now over here let's say this is my pressure hose that I'm going to reel up onto the reel. I'm going to simply have the plug on the or the coupler on this end and I'm going to put it on there and then I'm going to roll it up 100 feet, 150 feet, 200 feet, whatever you use. I use 200 feet of hose and they're two separate 100 foot hoses and they're actually connected together by what's called a steel hex coupler, which is like this. And so that's how I would connect my two hoses together so they lay flatter on the reel. Now, some of you guys may use the coupler as your lead fitting and that's okay. You would just simply reverse these two fittings and so you would have your coupler here and you would have your plug over here. If you're doing this by fittings, this is the way I do it, and there's a reason I do it this way. And so this would be your coupler going into here. This goes off to your machine. Over here would be your pressure hose. It goes here, and this would be where your ball valve or your gun or whatever would go. But like I said, I do mine the opposite. You can do yours however which way you like. A lot of guys like to have the coupler on the end of their hose. Um, I personally like to have the plug. I especially like having the plug on the end of my ball valve setup. So, the other way that you can do that, do all this without having to use plug fittings here or your quick connects and couplers over here. And the reason I do this is because if this 100 foot hose bust, it's very easy for me to take this off, replace it, hook up another coupler to the hose, put it back on, I'm back in business, okay? Um, the other thing I like about doing it this way is it allows me on certain jobs, if I just wanna drop the hose and move the truck and drag the hose and not have to reel it all the way up, I can do that. Um, but the other way you can do it is if you don't have, if don't want to use these coupler fittings, then you can just direct connect this to this fitting here. And then, get it to go in, okay, 
and now you're eliminating the coupler fitting. But the problem with this that I've always found is with the water going through, sometimes you get a little leak or, or whatever, this just kind of gets rusty and they're hard to remove. So that's why I like using the coupler and the uh, plug as fittings here, disconnects. So they're easy to disconnect, easy to maintain, easy to replace, um, easy to move, all that kind of stuff. So, um, the, and, and another great thing about this method, put this back on here, there's lots of times we have to add 50 feet or 100 feet of hose, and we'll do that in 50 foot increments. So this just allows me to take this hose off, my 200 foot hose, pull that 200 foot hose down closer to where I need to be, and then add the 50 foot hose here. That way when I'm done, all I have to do is disconnect the 50 foot hose, the 50 foot hose is by the truck, and all I'm doing is rolling that up by hand. So just a lot of reasons why um, I think it's easier to have your fittings up here and you just orientate these whichever way that you like your lead fitting to be and what you want your end of fitting to be on your hose where your water's coming out of. So that's how I do the pressure hoses. Um, that one was a little bit longer because there's different ways that you can do it. You can also over here take your whip line and do the same thing as I just said on the inside. You can direct connect this to there if you wanted to, to eliminate the fitting. But again, for me, it's just always easier to have quick connect fittings any place I can, I can do that. So that's basically um, how you do that. If you uh, have any questions, uh, be sure to ask in the comment section below. Uh, but that's how you plumb your hose reels, your garden hose, your soft wash hose, and your pressure hose. So hope that helps you guys. Again, any questions, please let me know. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. That way you always get notifications when I come out with something that could be useful to you. Uh, leave me a question. Leave me a comment. Hit that bell. There's a little bell. Um, if you hit that bell, then you'll get notifications by email um, when I come out with a video and then also hit that like button okay guys hope y'all have an awesome day whatever you're doing be blessed and we'll talk to you again soon